hi welcome to my channel and today i have another theater vlog for you so today i'm actually traveling to leeds to leeds playhouse to go and see the house with chicken legs which is based on a children's novel and i'm really looking forward to it never seen it before i'm really looking forward to going back to leeds playhouse for it was a really lovely venue last time i went so this is being shown in the courtyard theater and i'm sat in the stalls today i'm on f row f seat two so yeah i'm really looking forward to it so i'm gonna head out now and get my train my train is at half three i should get there for about five o'clock the show starts at seven so i should have time to get something to eat hopefully i'll be able to find it a bit better this time last time i ended up going in the complete opposite direction it took me over an hour to find it hopefully this time i sort of know where i'm going so yeah i am gonna head out now and i'll get back to you probably when i'm at the tram stop I've just arrived at Victoria Station now, maybe Victoria Station, and I think I've got half an hour yet till my train, so I might see if there's anywhere I can get something to eat, and yeah, about half an hour. So I didn't realise there was a Greg's here, so I can get a nice sausage roll, I think I can get a sausage roll if I've got any, and a drink. Okay, so my train is going from platform six, so we need to go up and across the bridge. Okay, so I'm just on the platform now waiting for the train. I've got a sausage roll and a donut. I'm going to sit and eat this while waiting for the train. I've got about 20 minutes yet, so I've got quite a while. So I'll probably get back to you now when I'm on the train. So I've just arrived at Leeds train station. <laughs> now comes the difficult part of finding my way to the theatre. Because if you remember last time, it took me about two hours to find it. Hopefully it won't take me this long this time.
So as I don't know where anything is in Leeds, I've just come to McDonald's for dinner because I know where this is and it's on the way. So just got this. Okay, so I've just finished up in McDonald's and now I'm gonna continue on to the theatre. I think it's this way. It's up one of these roads anyway. Not that sure which one. Okay, so it is six o'clock, so I'm here an hour early. I'm gonna head in, I can probably sit down, have a drink. There's a cafe in here and like a little restaurant and stuff, so yeah, I'm gonna head in now. I've now arrived at the theatre. There was some music on, so I won't be able to say too much, but I'm just sat in the like kitchen bar area. And I'm just gonna sit here for a little bit. It's not open for about another 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, looking forward to the show and I'll probably get back to you in the interval. So I've just been and collected my program and drinks voucher. Yeah, and it is half six now, so I think the auditorium should be opening soon. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the show. Okay, so the auditorium has now opened. This is my ticket. So I need to go into Courtyard 1 and I'm on row F seat 2. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm Okay, so I'm in the auditorium now. The stage looks really good. So I'm on row F, seat one and two.
Okay, so I'm now in the auditorium in my seat. I'm on row F, seat one and two. Um, because it's in seat two. I'll just show you the view from my seat. Okay, so this is a view from my seat. It's a really good view. And I'll get back to you now in the interval. So it is now the interval. I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I am. It's so good. Really enjoying it. I'm just about to go to the bar and get my drink now. Okay, got my drink, just got a Diet Coke. So I'm gonna head back to the auditorium now and drink that with it. Okay, so I'm back in my seat now. Um, it will be over any minute. And show's gonna start, so I'm really looking forward to the second half. And I'll tell you all about the show when I get back. made it to the train station with 10 minutes to spare. I think this is the train. Yeah, this must be the one. Okay, so I'm now at the tram station. I missed the one that I wanted to get. There's one Piccadilly in three minutes. And then the last tram to Old Trimum is it from Piccadilly is 11.57. So it shouldn't take me, it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes to get there, hopefully. It's like, do I get the Chafford Bar one or do I get the Piccadilly one? I'm gonna get the Piccadilly one, hope for the best. So I'm now at Piccadilly tram station and literally just missed my Altrincham tram. But there is one more in 12 minutes, so at least it's not missed the last one. So it's now the next day, so I just thought I'd give you a little review of the house with chicken legs, which I saw at the Leeds Playhouse yesterday. I'm sorry if you can hear the washing machine in the background, my husband put it on, and yeah, it's quite noisy, so hopefully it won't make too much noise while I do this review, um, because I haven't got anywhere else I can film it, so. So yeah, I went to see the house with chicken legs at the Leeds Playhouse. It was on in their courtyard first, um, I was sat on row F, seat two, and the view was really good from there. I had a really good view, really clear view of the stage, plenty of leg room, so I would definitely sit there again. So there was no merch for the show other than the programmes. I think these were about five pounds. Mine was gifted, so I'm not quite sure, but I think it was either four or five pounds for the programme. And like I said, there's no other merch except for programs. So if you don't know anything about The House with Chicken Legs, it is based on Sophie Anderson's 2018 children's novel, The House of Ch with Chicken Legs. And it has been adapted for the stage by Olive Lansley and produced by Les Enfants Terrible. So the story is actually very loosely based on the Slovakic folklore of Baba Yaga, who was like this cannibalistic witch type creature used to ride around in a mortar and used to wield a pestle um yeah she was quite a scary sort of um character and used to feast on like the bones of children and stuff so yeah she was quite a quite a horrible character and she was thought to guard the fountain of the water of life and she was supposed to live in a house with chicken legs or a house with bird legs 
Um, so it's very loosely based on that. The Baba Yaga in this story is like a nice, kind, caring grandmother who helps the dead cross over into the afterlife or return to the stars is I think that's how they put it. So the play is told from Marinka's point of view. She is uh, a 12 year old girl, she's orphaned, her parents died when she was a baby and her grandmother Baba Yaga takes care of her. So Baba Yaga is a, Baba Yaga sorry, Baba Yaga is a guardian of the gate, so a guardian of the gate to the next life or to the stars and it is her job to guide the dead through the gate into the next into the next life into the afterlife and baba yaga wants marinka to take over this role one day so when she's no longer able to fulfill out her role of guiding the dead she wants marinka to take over and guide the dead through the gate so the yaga house where marinka and her grandmother live is what holds the gate and because they, they can't allow the living to find the gate the house has chicken legs so it can move um randomly whenever it wants to so there's no chance of the living finding it however due to this it means that Marinka and her grandmother never stay in one place too long which means that Marinka isn't able to make any friends her own age so Marinka finds this life of a Yaga very lonely, um, she has no friend, she only has Baba Yaga and Jack the Jackdaw as her friend. Jack the Jackdaw she apparently erased from a chick, so he's a loyal friend um, and that's her only friend is, is this bird. So Marinka longs for a normal life, a life where she can just stay in one place and make friends and just live her own life. So one day while Marinka is out in her garden, a ball bounces into her yard and a young boy comes to retrieve it. So Marinka and the boy start to talk, uh, they end up making friends and they arrange to meet up the next day and hang out. But when Marinka wakes up the next day, the house has moved on and she's no longer anywhere near where the boy lives. So this only affirms Marinka's feelings that she does not want the life of a Yaga and that she wants a life of her own. So when Baba Yaga actually ends up having to help a weakened soul through the gate, meaning that she won't be able to return, um, Marinka will stop at nothing to get her back. Not just because she misses her grandmother, but because she really doesn't want to become her grandmother's successor. So when I first walked into the auditorium and saw the set, I was like, wow, I thought this is going to be good. The set looked really good. It was really colourful. It had like a screen on the back, which has like a city landscape on it, but um, it was quite colourful and sort of abstracty looking. It looked really good. And then you had the big house set and the house was really detailed actually and on the front of the house it adds sort of like little hand sort of painted pictures which is um what uh, sl traditional slavic houses have on them so i thought that was nice a feature and um very detailed and then the inside of the house looked really really good um it was quite colorful and there was a sideboard which had lots of little trinkets on it there was a rocking chair in there and then there was an oven and this oven is used quite a bit for baba yaga because every night when the dead comes she would cook them a meal which is supposed to give them strength to move over to the other side so yeah i thought the set was really good um also outside they had like a fence of bones with around the house so it made the house look quite creepy um but yeah i thought the set was fantastic and also the set piece for the house could be moved around so when the house was supposed to be moving the house got pushed around moved to different locations on the stage which i thought was really good so the screen at the back of the stage was used throughout the show um 
mostly to show like the different landscapes that the house would move to it also showed like a swirling vortex for um when the people were passing through to the afterlife and it's also used to help show the house move into its next um its next home and this was also coupled with music so it used like really loud drums which i thought actually worked really well it's like the footsteps of the house when it ra ran and i thought that coupled with the um with the projections on the screen worked really well i thought that was really good i thought the costumes for the show were really nice as well they're quite colorful um and i think they they seem to be inspired by traditional slavic dresses um you could definitely see the look of the traditional dress in the costumes there's also some funny costumes the costumes of the yaga houses they were really good really interesting and yeah i thought the costumes were great really enjoyed the costuming so the show also made use of puppets there was jack the jackdaw puppet who was marinka's friend that puppet was actually quite detailed um and the way it moved was quite realistic so he was a really nice detail puppet and then they used more sort of traditional marionette style um puppets um they look quite old-fashioned like and they sort of resemble sort of russian dolls they were used when the characters would tell a story about the past so uh, baba yaga sometimes told marinka a story about her parents and how they met so that was all done with puppets there were some other stories that used puppets as well and i thought that was a really nice visual way of telling that part of the story so i have to say with the set design the costumes the puppetry the lighting that they used the lighting was really good as well it made for a really visually stunning production i thought it was it was visually very good yeah i thought like visually this show was excellent so the, there was quite a few musical numbers in the show there's some really catchy ones that um got stuck in your head and there were some really nice sort of ballady ones as well so i really enjoyed the music in the show i thought it was really good and it did help move the story along a bit so the cast for this show i have to say were absolutely fantastic all of them are perfect Eva de Leon Allen played multiple roles um so yeah they all played multiple roles except for her and they were so good um they all used they used different accents for the roles and they were able to just slip between the, ro the different roles so seamlessly I thought they were, were very very talented really good cast and to top that off not only were they playing uh, multiple roles but they were also playing multiple instruments live on stage as well so the cast were also the band and yeah what an amazingly talented cast that they were they were all absolutely excellent i just really enjoyed everyone's performance everyone was fantastic um i can't single out anyone as being better than the rest they were all just fantastic loved all of them Okay, so this is probably a good point for me to go through the programme and show you the cast of biographies. Okay, so this is the programme. That's the front cover. And then on the first page here, it says meet the author. It has some questions that she's answered here. And then this page is meet the producer so this is some information about Les Enfants Terribles so here is a little interview it says where it all started it's an interview with the author and the artistic director it's got a production photo in there and then we have and then we have the cast biographies so I think this is in alphabetical order so we have Dan Willis who um was Jackdaw, he um he controlled the Jackdaw puppet. So he has been in Oliver Twist in Leeds at the Leeds Playhouse. He's been in Not About Heroes, A Fellow, A Christmas Carol, 
Um, so he's done quite a few things. Then we have Eloise Warboys. She played Nina as well as a few other characters as well. It says that Eloise had performed in many corners of the globe. Uh, she's toured a fringe production around Ireland and Greece called Love in the Harbour. And she's performed with community theatres across the South East. Uh, so her recent theatre credits include Jane Eyre in Polly's Tales and Nick in the short film Honey Trap. So Eve de Leon Allen played Marinka. Their theatre credits include Sugarcoat at the Southwark Playhouse, Cinderella, she's been in Blood Harmony's UK tour, and they were in The House with Chicken Legs when it was at home in Manchester. Lisa Howard played Baba. Then we had Michael Barker playing Ben. So he played Quentin in a touring production of Jack and the Beanstalk. Jonathan in an immersive production of Paddington Marmalade Messiness. And a few other things there. Then we have Stephanie Levi John. She played Yaga. Uh, her theatre credits include Winter's Tale at the National Theatre, Macbeth at the National Theatre and Mabea at Bristol Old Vic. Then we have some rehearsal photos here. Some of the puppets. Some more rehearsal photos. And then this is your creative team. Got some more production shots. Another one of the puppets. More creative team. More production shots. And this is bringing the house to life. So this is. Um, the video designer, set designer and sound designer all talking about how they work together to bring the house to life. It's an interesting little article. And then you have the full credits here. And there we go, that is the programme. I think that's quite a nice little programme. There's some nice articles in there, uh, nice cast biographies. So yeah, I think that is a really nice little program. So I have to say that I really enjoyed the House with Chicken Legs. Um, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I'd say it's not just a show for kids. Uh, the recommended age range for the show is nine plus, um, but I'm an adult and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really good. I suppose in summary, The House of Chicken Legs is a kind of age story about finding your, yourself, it's a show that has wonderfully endearing characters and it deals with subjects such as loss and grief and it's definitely a show with a lot of heart um, and the show is also visually stunning as well and it has some truly magical moments in it. It's definitely a great family show and I, like I said, I had a fantastic time, really enjoyed it. I would definitely go and see this show again. Um, so for me, because like, if if you want to see it again, then it's definitely a good show. So I would definitely give this show five stars. Like I said, I just thought everything was really good. Acting was all, all really good. The costumes, the set, everything. I just really, really enjoyed it. And the songs were good as well. And the story I thought was excellent. So yeah, for me, this is definitely a five star show. It's on at the Leeds Playhouse till the 16th of September. So I'll link down below where you can get tickets for those shows. It's also touring. So I will link down below the 
Les Enfants Terribles website because that lists all the venues that it's going to be touring to. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this little vlog. If you do enjoy theatre vlogs and reviews, then do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell and you'll be notified as soon as a new video goes up. I do lots of theatre vlogs and reviews on this channel. I've got, I think, three or four already waiting to go up from when I went to London. Um, so I've got one for Wicked, Moulin Rouge, Tina Turner the Musical, Matilda, and Book of Mormon. So if you'd be interested in seeing any of those, like I said, do subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified as soon as they go up. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. If you have, please do give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.